You are now locked into Radio Juxtapose, the home of contemporary art and culture conversation. Coming up today. Most people who know me, and this has like been a problem my whole life, where I'm so straightforward where it gets me in trouble. And like my paintings, I hope to be a reflection of that. This is Radio Juxtapose. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. One, two, one, two, checkeroo. <laughs> wow. And that's how we're starting the Radio Juxtapose podcast with Rebecca Morgan. And here it was where I thought we were going to go like track by track on the new Kanye West album today. Oh, I'm good with that too. Did you, did, does that interest you? Cause that's like kind of a big like art news thing today is that Kanye West drops Jesus is Lord or whatever his new album is. But he didn't though. That's the thing. Like, it, <laughs> what do you mean? I don't think it did. I, I thought it was all false promises or did it actually happen? It's on Spotify. Okay. Well, maybe we should have at least that be the intro music <laughs> outro, but then Kanye will come for us, but he's also canceled, isn't he? So maybe we don't have to worry. Wait. Well, Kanye's, Kanye's never canceled in my opinion, but he's very problematic these days. That's a really good question because, let's, <laughs> or just, are you somebody who can cancel people, but still like their art? I, I always use a Michael Jackson example, so I'm not going to use it this time, yeah. but uh, Woody Allen, for example. Yeah. Never liked him. Never will. But Kanye, this is the best <laughs> but Kanye is a different, in a lot of ways, I understand where he's coming from. I truly do. But I mean, not recently, it's almost impossible to excuse some of this stuff, but so prolific forever that just like the goat. So I'll always love him with the understanding that he is going through some things, but I'll always be curious to see what he puts out and how he delivers it. I do think that he's, he's just like a maniac. He's an artist. Yeah. I don't know. It's almost like romanticized Kanye, but that's kind of like everything. How do we navigate all of this stuff these days? Like everything feels kind of bad. Everything feels problematic. Everything, right. Everyone is doing horrible things, but sometimes beautiful things. And, but man, it's a rough one. He's a hard one to come back because I love him so deeply and he's just a nut. And I like seeing his brain like activated, but maybe he's just coming at it from a whole other activated plane. Right. I and mean, that's what he wants us to think too. Right. And you're, <laughs> no, this is good. I love it because it's going to get full circle here. Yeah, right. We are in the back of Latino's restaurant here in Chelsea. Uh, just after me seeing your show, Town and Country, for the first time, your characters have many flaws. Mm -hmm. So it seems like it's appropriate that you would talk about flaws being something that's okay to be analyzed and sort of, I don't know, like we're not even talking about appreciation, but like the idea that flaws are something that need to be addressed. I get asked all the time why I make these characters with these like, um, that look so hideous and kind of unfortunate and that are clearly flawed physically. Unfortunate. Yeah. Such a good word. Unfortunate. <laughs> that okay. are unfortunate yeah. looking. In most ways it's about power and reclamation, re reclaiming some of the uncomfortable things that ultimately make you more powerful. So, you know, I make these characters that, you know, have bad teeth and are unfortunate looking, have, you know, pustules, but they are seemingly unconcerned. And to me, like what greater position of power to be in when you acknowledge that you're flawed and you have all of these misgivings, but you're okay with it and you're just functioning and like on a higher plane and just doing your thing. Ultimately, it came from when I was like, everything is fodder to be used. So like growing up, I had a really thick, crazy mustache. I was called Mustache Morgan. I had crazy thick eyebrows. Can, can you just let us know where that was, where you grew up? Uh, Clearfield, Pennsylvania. Okay, um, God bless. Um, in Appalachia, <laughs> central Pennsylvania, very conservative farm town. Um, but this idea of this liminal love where I truly love this place that gave me a sense of identity, but is also completely like ganked out in all other socio-political ways. Anyways, so it comes full circle to just be like, now all of my characters that I draw have, you know, crazy thick mustaches and these eyebrows because it's me. And then ultimately it's kind of like all of the uncomfortable shit that informed me. And now it's like, I'm going to use that as a position of power. And now this is a part of my aesthetic, something that I can use for my, my own power mm -hmm. moving forward. Is a lot of your work a reflection of the town that you grew up in or the area that you grew up in or is it or is it 
just even more dialed in biographic about yourself mm. in a way. Yeah. Well, ultimately I think, I mean, it's always, the impetus is always home. Everything is about like straddling this middle line of this place that, like I said, I truly love, but it's mm-hmm. so complicated. And also I always had these dreams of the urban of, I never thought I would be able to exist in New York city, let alone be an artist. That was not even a conversation. Mm-hmm. Like that was not a topic. I didn't even think about it. Growing up, you were like a nurse, a school teacher, you worked at the bank and that mm-hmm. was kind of like all there was to it. But long story short, this place that I revere, but also loathe. And then also the urban, which I revere and also loathe. And so like, I'm not, I have one foot in at all times, one foot out at all times, insider, outsider, high and low, which I love. And I mean, at, at its core, what everything's about. But the characters are like often my family. Sometimes they are like caricatures. Sometimes they're really straightforwardly exactly the person. Mm-hmm. But like even when they're male, they're still me because it's mostly a diaristic like depiction okay. of okay. things more yeah. or less. Did you notice at all? And I, I always dread bringing up the politics of it, but in Trump's America, mm-hmm. the left has been really, really hard on rural America. Yes. And sometimes rural America is kind of like egging it on a little bit, I would say. I mean, I would argue that there's a very interesting going back and forth conversation going on at the moment. Yeah. Does that make it harder to paint rural America in a certain way like this? Because it's like, you know, it's like uh, the show Veep. Like it wasn't as funny in the last season. She's like, "Oh wait, this stuff's real." You know what I mean? Like, or like <laughs> too oh, close it's, to it's, home. yeah, it's too close to home. Like, is there anything in the way that the most of our listeners are from America, so they can identify with the tension that's kind of going on between right and left? So, is there anything like where you were kind of like, "Oh, do I have to rethink what I'm doing," or is it like, "No, actually, this is better time mm-hmm. than ever to start doing these kind of depictions and these kind of conversations." Was that too heavy-handed, or that kind of makes that makes sense? No, it makes perfect sense. Okay. I mean, it's one of those things. Like again, coming back to this thing of a position of power. I'm I'm making these images of people that are sometimes like caricatures of these bumpkin yokels, mm-hmm. but that are also completely me. You know, I'm one of those. So I guess I have the like authority to say that this is okay. <laughs> but also... Wait, do you get called out for it ever? Oh, for sure. For instance, my mom... So I was right in the New York Times today. And so my mom was like, let's... We need to like show this off to the hometown paper. And I was like, yeah, for sure. This is amazing. But then I was like, well, hold on a second because the work at its core is talking about Clearfield, Pennsylvania, where I, you know, and this is in the Clearfield, Pennsylvania, little tiny, you know, news outlet. So I really revere moments like this when I can actually articulate myself and like have an artist talk where I can articulate myself and on Instagram where I can say like, use my actual words to, to make it make the, you know, make it all make sense and articulate it. Again, it's like this liminal, almost damned if you do, damned if you don't. And like, yeah. like my family back home, I understand exactly I mean I don't but I I know their reasoning for why they believe some of the things Mm -hmm. that they do and it's like it's ingrained like hundreds of years that it's not like you know some of my buddies up here would just be like well you can't ever talk to your like racist family member Mm -hmm. ever again I'm like well maybe we just don't talk about it but then the cycle perpetuates so again it's like I don't know what to do other than to just try to white knuckle life and so I'm trying to make (laughs) paintings about white knuckling America me as a woman you know and like I have it really good as a cis white woman but also everything feels like it's on fire right so the images are just trying to make sense of that in any way but the rural is complicated the urban is complicated everyone is blaming you know clearly i I look at at the rural and i think single-handedly like you're almost responsible for this Mm -hmm. and i know that my peers in new york city are clearly they're like for sure your crew did this and so i'm not sure like your crew. <laughs> yeah this is your fault <laughs> yeah okay so yeah. And like and i'm like well it's not though and and, and here's yeah, why it's so, yeah it's it's not just like cut and dry and then sometimes it's like oh this is super cut and dry right like where you know you're on either on the right side of history or the wrong side it's like so many years of just horrible shit happening to these impoverished rural people that mm. have just been you know forever so it's impossible to navigate and it's getting trickier by the day um this is long-winded to just say i'm not sure everything feels bad i guess that if there's anything that i want to impart that i want to try to make images that provide a little levity and like with a little bit of a bittersweetness like where it's like 
here's a funny image or like this reclamation of like trying to bring it back and be like, we've all been in this situation and especially females been like, we've all had a shitty boyfriend or we've all had some pervert in our face or we've all had some problem. So like, here's an image that we can all kind of acknowledge and laugh about and have a, a tiny second of levity in how awful mm -hmm. things feel. And right. then like, maybe let's just move from there like day at a time. So that's interesting because one of the things that like R. Crumb is an artist who used comedy but with a deep, deep sense of like... Reverence. Reverence and also like he was trying to tell a story and there was some truth to what he was talking about and as I know but that's a male artist. Yeah, yeah. And he's one of the, he's one of the forefathers of the juxtaposed kind of scene. So I look at your work and I'm like, wow, this is like kind of takes an interesting kind of almost comic booky look mm -hmm. at the kind of the world that we live in but who are some of the female artists Artists that kind of started a conversation with you in your head, like, okay, maybe I can do this. Or did that not even exist? You're like, fuck it, I have to do this myself. Hmm. And that path, I had to trailblaze on my own. Well, that's kind of an interesting thing because as soon as you said it, I was like, oh my God, who are the female people? And I think that's more the question. That's right, the problem yeah. where I was like, when I was growing up, I bring up Mad Magazine all the time, but Mad Magazine was like the, that was the entry point for everything. The Glad you said that because I think we don't acknowledge Mad Magazine enough with Juxtapose and there's so much of their history into what we do. So I think that's really great that you mentioned that. Yeah, I mean, it has to, I found at like too formative of an age, I found my dad's mad magazines, but it was, it was. <laughs> I mean, that's like so funny because it's like, it's not Playboy magazine, yes. it's Mad Magazine, but the Playboy too has an art history that's really yes. important. It's, it's yeah. totally titillating. Yeah. And like some of those, like there were images, it was titillating and bodacious women and like these kind of vacant women and females, but I'm like, but they were beautiful. And not only just females, but I I guess long story to say that there were I for sure wasn't looking at female comic mm -hmm. I, I had no entry point and so the only entry point living in rural Pennsylvania that I had were these scraps of little things lying around and most more importantly besides Mad Magazine was also like the Sunday funnies old school like Calvin and Hobbes that would just be like peanuts for real sweetness I, mixed I'm, up with like very like next to an R. Crumb and then probably like a high school I was like oh R. Crumb and even like all I had was television like Saturday Night Live, Andy Kaufman, and then like yeah. the internet hit. Yeah. And like, so, but that, I was doing deep dives, but I also didn't know what to look for. And I was, I felt like I was searching for something, but there, who was going to tell me or who, right. who, what did I, what was the Google like search word to put in for me to figure this shit out? Also, I don't know. Also, there was kind of an era where like for people, I, cause we're around the same age, mm -hmm. I think. <laughs> I'm, probably, I'm probably older. I don't know. Where like, I loved Gary Larson in the far yes, side. Yes, absolutely. Think about him all Shaped the time. Shaped my whole sense of humor and everything. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know what to do with it. Yeah. What do I do with the fact that I like the Sunday <laughs> comics? I'm always fascinated with artists who are motivated or were influenced by stuff and who actually acted upon it because I yeah. kind of didn't I never acted upon it but I still to my, this day I can think of Gary Larson strips and just be like this changed my life yeah you were talking about how kind of those next steps like the cookie crumbs now are like okay so I have this um, particular interest how do I what do I do with it I know well I mean I was still like even in college I was so rural that was, where, where was college college was Bloomsburg University it was like a small state school that right, like graduated with like a few tiny people and but I was so hungry for whatever this art stuff was that I had kind of I found uh Lisey Scavage she really changed my life oh, yeah. I mean honestly yeah. it was Lisey Scavage John Curran and Robert Crumb and Robert Crumb oh, was probably good those <laughs> good, <laughs> good weirdo <laughs> painters no who just like something is just a little a little off. off yeah and also John Curran's very good John Cur and also from the same position of like of Crumb where male painters making these bodacious paintings that not sure who to trust and it, it's like a male gaze and also like uh, like fuck you but also like how can you not love Robert Crumb but also when you hear what he says about women it's just like Joel oh my god it's hard to deal with and <laughs> and it's just like but he's been with like the same woman forever yeah so but kind the, of but it's, like doing, I know, I know. I know. but there's always that weird thing where you're like, <laughs> how does that like what is she, she occasionally being like I don't know dude but I think it's like also none of our business but it's also sure. it's everyone's business because he's like literally here's what's in my perverted mind and I'm wow. going to show you so we went full circle back yeah. into the Kanye West <laughs> It's like power, dudular shit. Just dudes kind of being like, what, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? Okay. such a problem. Always in my face, always causing, you know, oh, anyways. Sorry. Thanks. I, thank you. Thanks for what it's worth. 
problem. Fine. You're like not the problem, <laughs> yeah. but ultimately, I, I don't know. But but at the at the core of it, it's just like, what do you do with someone who it, like the only thing I'm interested in is the most genuine expression. And so I, in some ways, it's like, well. Crumb is such a pervert, but he's telling you straight up, I am a pervert and check this yeah. out. And right. like, and Kanye is like, well, I'm complicated and I'm also God. There's less for me to work with. <laughs> but, you know? then, but then what, so what are you saying then with your work? Your work is very visually could, could turn people off yeah, or it could make them go, what the fuck? That's pimples on the ass. Like, how do you answer that? to people yeah well don't doesn't everyone have a pimple on your ass like yeah, at no, the end of sure. the day yeah. like let i just i'm very interested in like let's call it exactly what it is yeah. like like let's i can't i have no time most people who know me and this has like been a problem my whole life where i'm so straightforward where it gets me in trouble and like my paintings i hope to be a reflection of that like i like at all times i just want to get to the heart of it just like tell me what you want tell me what you mean i'm telling you what i mean or and sometimes it's a little thinly veiled and other times it's in, like a one-liner and like all of these people we're talking about like sometimes it's one liner sometimes it's multi-layered sometimes mm -hmm. it's a little bit like look over here and then what do you call that a little uh, smoke and mirror yeah a little a little one of those razzle dazzle moments yeah. so, <laughs> but at the end of the day it's just like i just need to be to just try to figure some things out and not even just for myself but my problems are a lot of people's problems and especially female Emails, or I'm trying to use myself as in some way like vehicle to talk about these things, but also, you know, like my very private moments of boring cunnilingus <laughs> or pimples on the ass or like exhaustion and horrible behavior from men being groped, you know, like this is just like a normal day for so many, mm -hmm. especially women. Like this is just a normal, you like, yeah, on a daily basis. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, here we go. <laughs> what does the white male have to say about I was like, this? Look. But um, why is Town and Country? When I when I walked into the show, you're like, this is this is the best show I've ever done. Mm. That was the first thing you said to me. Yeah. Why is this show the best show you've ever done? Mm. Excellent question. I would say that it's probably because it's these are images that I've been thinking about for a long time. That this is the first kind of the last show that I had was two years. So I've been making this show for two years and. You know, like I. Do you like that kind of time in between shows? Is that comfortable for you, or is that a little like? I mean, I mean everything always feels bad. <laughs> art, art, art is so hard. Yeah, Life no, is so sure. hard. Great answer. <laughs> no, seriously, it's a great answer. And to say like it's easy. No, I like that. It's everything's hard. Okay. Everything's hard. Everything feels impossible. So to like have a little wins here and there, like honestly, to have a show, a solo show, is beyond a dream. To have a New York solo show like beyond expectations to be represented you know but these are also things like also we can name the gallery by yeah the way. Aussie guy spare yes like, who, are, who you've shown with for years for, no. yeah like nine or ten years yeah my number one girl so like in the scheme of things all that I've like ever wanted period I'm like all eat sleeping breathing all of this stuff so but also my artwork is intertwined like my artwork is me I'm the artwork you know like everything is everything it's all innately coded in that sense but some of these images i haven't had the time to actually just sit and and make until like all right you have a year out so now what are your paintings going to be i'm like i've had i have these images ready to go like i've been sitting on this is what i want for this for my two-year hiatus back mm -hmm. i want this painting and because these paintings i think when i say this is the best show that, that's that i've ever done every show should kind of feel like that i hope that these images i think at the core communicate what i want them to communicate okay and so like this again liminal state this personal and uh, other diaristic and everyone for every word there's like the inverse of it mm -hmm. and so but i think it's mostly about labor women's labor my labor everyone's labor it's it's female centric mm -hmm. and it just and how the world feels extra hard to navigate in this socio-political climate with our leader and just it feels impossible and not only that but just like on the day-to-day -day, just navigating things and you know people at work and people saying things so these images are kind of a reflection of just like trying to navigate mm -hmm white knuckle life everything's impossible or it feels like it so what are the images that reflect that kind of state of mind or my state of mind and everyone else's state of mind i think does that make sense yeah no it totally <laughs> does and do you do you edit yourself do you get to a point where you, okay you're a year into making the show yeah and you go to yourself i didn't take this far enough 
uh, or I went too far. I mean, are there are there ways that you edit yourself at all, or mm-hmm. are you pretty much feeling pretty comfortable <laughs> with the groove that you get? No, yeah, you yeah. feel comfortable with the groove that you get into, and that you feel like you're communicating these things, and you're like, yeah, I, I went. That's this is exactly the level it should be at. Yeah, that's a good question too. I ask good questions. Definitely, yeah. Hell yeah. Very thoughtful. There you go. Very thoughtful. So I'm a professor, and so a lot of the like, and that's very important to me, and to also kind of demystify how artwork gets made and how an artist works through problems Mm -hmm. and how an artist makes multiple images for a show. What I do is I always make a list and it's usually titles first and so or like concepts first. Yeah. One of the paintings in the show is like you can have it all. And I was like, I wanted an image of a woman trying to balance a lot of shit. So, you know, I was like, maybe she'll be trying to carry things and things will be slipping and falling and she's having a hard time. So I'm like, what would be an image of a woman trying to like have everything? So then it's like starts off slowly where I make some sketches make then it's like just all composition centric so mm-hmm. it's like well maybe she has a baby but then the baby started off this way and it looks a little different now or like the macaroni spilling on her in this way where I thought it was, oh that piece is so good it's pretty hot if I do oh, say so oh it's so <laughs> fucking good oh my god but it's Mostly, I talk a lot and preach a lot about this to like students and just people who have questions about how things get done, how Mm -hmm. things actually happen. And I think that you have to spend, I think it's your responsibility. I guess it's like depending on the artist. But for me, I think if you're already kind of not sure how to go about something, you start with like asking again, like at the heart of it, what what do I need to communicate? What's the actual image? And I'm like title centric first. So I start with a concept and then... Then kind of be like, what are you title? Were you always title first? Or is that something you kind of, you were able, as you got more comfortable with, with your art making, you were like, I can do title first and work off the concepts that way. Maybe I don't think so much about it. And that's another thing too, that I talk about <laughs> that, you know, like being in art schools and so many different ones, the same problems always arise. And so I'm also thinking about some of the, the things that people are asking me all the time. Like I'm so stuck. How do I work through it? Or like, maybe I should do this. What do you think I should do about this? What if I did it this way? And I'm like, you just need to try it and see if if it works and see if it feels good or maybe like 30% of this and maybe like throw the rest out. What but, you just explained when someone comes to you that way, a student comes to you yeah, with this sort of crisis of their, of their craft. Yeah. You basically just treated it like a therapist session. Oh, big time. Isn't art therapy? I mean, yeah, like, but like, I mean, it's, you're right. You just work through it and yeah, try new things. You like, have to, it's all on you. Like you're the only, you're the only person to deal with this. I can't make your work for you. What is it that you're at the heart of it? What are you thinking about the most? I'm thinking about these concepts. So I'm driven by the image first. And then maybe I don't know what the actual like composition, but I'm like killing myself trying to figure it out. Mm. And I'm like in the lab, like working it out. And so at the end of the day, maybe it's just like, I know maybe others, I know a lot of people that are just like, I do automatic drawings until something comes to me or like there's infinite ways to problem solve but you also have to know what you have to get to work to figure out what your problem is to solve. So what do you teach? Like, what is the course that you teach? Oh, I teach all kinds of stuff. I teach like oh, okay. little right. freshmen, like they're like first art one-on-one class. And then I like mold them in my image. <laughs> I teach uh, mostly drawing. I love to teach drawing. Um, Who is more annoying? The male students or the female students? Grads versus. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. sometimes yeah, grad sense. students think that they have it all figured out. And then the freshmen are like, freaked and terrified usually and so it's like a fine line between being like everything's okay and also like you're in big trouble (laughs) you know what I mean it's mostly like I deal with like every year I'm rolling with different types of people and different skill sets and like some are juniors some are freshmen some have never taken an art course before some have been around forever some think they know it all so it's like just the world you know it's like a little microcosm of creative world this is another thing too I wonder and you've had to deal with this do kids (laughs) more now because of Instagram and because the fact that art is more popular than it's ever been I would argue yeah do they think they're going to be stars like right away and like they're like look I know you have shows in New York City but (laughs) I'm pretty good I think I don't well maybe it's just the 
mm-hmm. places that I am at too, where the conversation's more like, what can art look like? Where hmm. so some of my people that I've I've rolled with in some of these, like that's actually a really nice thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's way better conversation. Okay, uh, and it's also like the permission that you have to do whatever you need to do. And like, and also my job is to facilitate, to be like, all right, do you know who Marina Abramovic is? Like you could just like do this type of shit and that would be cool. Like you could, you could pour honey on your head and call it a day. Like you could do whatever. Cause someone's already done it to also just show them and facilitate that that's nothing matters. So yeah. you might as well, time is ticking. Right. Like no more time to waste, do what you need to do. Right. But I don't think that, I think it's more conversations about in that therapeutic sense, like what do you need to do? How can I help you? And also this will be okay. Or maybe you don't need to do art or maybe your thing that you need to do that will feel better for yourself in the world is just like somewhere in between, or maybe you do any other job to just do your thing and get the bag at the end of the day and then make art wherever. So there's like infinite ways to navigate it Mm -hmm. and it's impossible to figure out. So the only way to know is to just get to work one way or the other. I do see people are looking closer at things. Like they just have more access and sometimes that can be crippling where they're just like, there's so much shit. And so I don't know what to do. Maybe that's the only thing, but I think everyone's frozen with fear these days. Like everyone's terrified. So they're like, there's no possible way that I can do. Cause that's what I thought when I was, when I first was in grad school, I was like, how does anyone even have a show? That's what I was saying earlier. I'm like, how does the fact that there's even an exhibition is mind blowing. I can't even believe that that's me because it's such an impossible thing, but it's also completely attainable. There are so many ding dongs that have shows. So like, why can't you, you know, (laughs) that's amazing. I I so, there's so many ding dongs. I know you and I both could talk about right now, but if you were to take your students to one museum or like one show and be like, you know, this is what Ooh. I'm into or what is like your, what's your go-to mm. for motivation, for influence, for inspiration? Like where, where do you have a, like, do you have a happy place? <laughs> as far as like looking at people or like where oh, to look okay. at That's, things? I was thinking about looking at art, but yeah, like, yeah, yeah. no, but if you have like a, if it's like the Olive Garden in your town, let's talk about the Olive Garden. Oh, I I love unlimited soup and salad. Like I fucking go ape for that shit. Yes. You know what? And okay. Panera, I love trash like that. Like no. Chipotle. Yeah. We've had the, I've had this conversation with people recently <laughs> that the gold mine of all gold mines is Chili's in the airport. Oh, for sure, no doubt. This is like a slice of Americana. <laughs> it is like like it. if you can mine. find an airport with the Chili's, <laughs> yeah. like Chicago's got a great one. Mm-hmm. Fort Lauderdale has got an amazing. Wow, I can't one. even imagine what. Fort Lauderdale Chili's oh, post, in the airport. Po- post our Basil Chili <laughs> at the airport. Is, but that's ironic, though. Oh, People it's are so, there for the irony. It's so But rare. it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Just to see someone in, like, Comme de Garçons, like, in, oh you know, God. probably, right? Hungover and <laughs> eating, like, the bottomless chips and salsa. Oh, my. <laughs> heaven. Manna from heaven. Yeah. Heaven. Well, Where's your happy place? My happy place, <laughs> too. <laughs> to sum that up, well, there's so many places that, like, I'm kind of a creature of habit, so I like to do the same types of shit over and over again. I'll, I like to dress a certain way, like, a uniform. I like a predictable thing. But I mean, as far as like looking at things and, and that type of happy place, yeah. like my community, because I am so many different places all the time mm-hmm. that my communities are, literally exist in my phone, in my hands. And sometimes it feels bad to be so hyper connected and tethered, but I really preach so deeply that you can be anywhere. You know, I'm in Arkansas right now. I'm teaching in Arkansas. So like, is that where you're living right now? Yeah, totally. I am, where, where I am, in Arkansas? I am knee, knee deep in Arkansas. I'm in Fayetteville. I'm teaching at the University of Arkansas. Yeah, but Fayetteville's really cool. Yeah, you been? Yeah, I have. Oh. Yeah, because I went to Bentonville yes. for Crystal the Bridges. Crystal Bridges. Yeah. Yeah, I actually found Fayetteville to be like it's tr- it's a great. cool college town. Yeah, it's charming. Yeah. Like, yeah. shout out to Fayetteville. Yeah. And that's the thing, like, I have so <laughs> That's the first Fayetteville <laughs> shout out we yeah. had. I maybe, ev- yeah, maybe Fayetteville's ever. Yeah. Well, the other thing is that... Do you, like, go to the football games and stuff? Well, I'm a big... Yeah, I like have all the shit. Have you thought Yeah. yeah, yeah I, no. I can see the stadium. Yeah. It's, like, a big deal. Yeah. But, I mean, the other thing that... That gets me nuts. Even since I've been here this week, I've had some people be like, because they never really know where I'm at. Like, I always keep everyone guessing. Like, last year I was... What do you mean? Like, where you actually live? Physically live? Everyone is always like, "Uh, can I come come do a studio visit with you in your New York studio? I'm like, oh, you know, unfortunately I don't live in New York. And they're like, Really? I'm like, yes, I, of course. And like, there is places outside of New York and Los Angeles. 
And so like even this this week, It's weird for people in New York to realize that there's other oh, yeah. places. Oh, yeah. it doesn't even cross their brain. I know, yeah. And so like the this other aspect of, you know, like since I've been here this week, I'd be like, well, where are this year? Because last year I was in New Hampshire. The year before that, I taught in Cincinnati. And I like it that way. And like I camp out in Pennsylvania sometimes and just bounce around. And I'd be like, well, where are you at these days? I'm like, oh, I'm teaching in Arkansas. And they're like, ooh, yuck. And I'm like, actually, it's fine. Yeah. It's, it's the best. Like I have an awesome life. So just like relax. It kind of goes back to the, the content of your shows. It's yes. like this kind of battle between urban and rural yes. America. Yeah. And that we caught this, this constant conversation that we have. Yeah. Like, where are we? Where are we at? Who are you? Yeah. Sizing each other up. Looking, you know, and when, when it's like, you know, when, you, when you're thinking about it, it's like, what, or when you're listing off the places, I'm like, Cincinnati's got a great museum. Yeah, of course. Uh, Fayetteville, Bentonville, like good art, little art communities yeah. there. Like, it's just weird how, it, you know, it, it just takes a little bit of exploring to get to that. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I kind of like to keep it, keep everyone guessing in that sense, but my hat, but again, full circle back to, you know, I'm tethered. I can be anywhere is what I'm trying to say. I can be yeah. in Arkansas and still have very meaningful conversations with people from all over the place. And then as much as I can, I try to follow up, you know, I try to follow up in person. So like I go to Miami, I go to, you know, I come for armory week mm -hmm. and I come up as much as possible, but you know, you can have real relationships with people just by saying like, hello, I really like your program. I really like your work. I just wanted to say hello yeah, yeah. and then like sometimes that works sometimes it doesn't but regardless at least you know you'll never know if you you know just try a little at the very least or like you have nothing to lose I, is what, know, it, what it is I, I actually my perception is where you lived was like the equivalent of the office scranton pennsylvania to new york super close Okay. Yeah. That's where I went to undergrad. Oh, okay. Screen's like super oh, close to where pretty, I, yeah, okay, yeah. Like Dwight has this froggy 98 sticker. That's like, yeah, that's our radio station. Oh, okay. Like that, that's very, very close. Okay. Very astute. Uh-huh. Okay. But, but that's like Pennsylvania shit. But, it, you know, Pennsylvania shit's like New Hampshire shit and is the same as like Ohio shit. The same as like these flyover states that like, again, at the end of the day, people kind of like also, forget. But it's that's where like most everyone is at. That's where everyone fucking lives. Like, don't be a brat. <laughs> you know, like, this is where most of these people came from, too. And a lot of people will, like, either reject that mm -hmm. or be like, you know, a lot of my peers in our world are not, were not born in New York. No. God, no. Yeah, so, no, like, no. I don't know. It's but exhausting. Do, I'm exhausted. What's the... <laughs> <laughs> Bad behavior. <laughs> just... I was having such a good time, and then, and then it took just, a turn. It took a turn Ugh. midway through, but, but then I realized I was enjoying myself I was back in the restaurant in Chelsea. The show's up till November second. You go back to Fayetteville. I do on Sunday. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and then I teach. I teach um, intermediate drawing. What's up, intermediate drawing? I teach you. I'm gonna see you guys on Monday. <laughs> on Monday. What, Monday what, are you, what are you? What are you gonna teach them on Monday? Um, they've been working on individual projects. Um, uh, what's this project? Oh, this one's called. They they have to find a headline. Um, it can be any type of headline. So, like, if uh, it can be E News, it could be Fox News, it could be mm -hmm. CNN, it could be anything. Like, whatever you're interested in, and then make an image loosely based off of that headline. So, a little bit like a. Um not like an op-ed assignment, but a little bit like kind of react to the world around you kind of? Yeah, it's usually like a good exercise if you're kind of not, because I'm like dealing with people who are like never, like haven't taken our class or are different um, degrees and things like that. So it's like how, like a safety net for how to make an image and like where to start. So some people are like, I'm like, tell, start with the image first. And this is for like everyone, you know, like, like talking about how to problem solve, start with the image first and start with the concept first. It's like, well, I'm really interested in like the beauty industry and like an Instagram and like, and how that is influencing tween girls. Google, you know, or like try to find a, a headline that's like, hey, Instagram is fucking people up. And then, so then like make an image about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, okay. So like, and so that's the barest like, like structure, you know what I mean? Just for, just for safety net type of a thing. Do you ever mm -hmm. get something from some, a student you're like, oh Jesus. Like, 
you're like, really? Like, this is this is what got you? Like, in what way, though? Like, like infinite like, ways. Is, like, like, is, th- is this really what got you excited to do a drawing assignment? Or are you just kind of like, no, it's okay, it's fine. Everything's open. Everything, Everything's open. It's more like the problems happen when it's, like, too appropriated for just, like, that they don't really necessarily know where it's coming from. Or, like, Disney princess or, like, anime type of thing. Mm-hmm. And then, like, regurgitated without any thought. But, I mean, I'm, like, living and dying for someone. To, to get weird like all I'm asking I'm like please get so insane I'm I'm like I show them the weirdest shit or I'm hoping to to just be like you could do ever like this is okay to do like anything counts and so do they Instagram you too oh, obviously they do I don't even know why I asked that of course they know who you, they know your art you'd be surprised well my, day one I always do my artist talk and I always show them because I think it's just everyone should be creeping on each other like if we're in the art world you should be looking be like okay who does your favorite artist follow what What's your favorite artist like? Where did they go to school? Who did they like yeah, hang yeah, out okay. with? All right. And so it's like when you're and trying you, to. You said creep on, but really basically you just said do your research. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. be creeping. Yeah. It's like. It sounds so much better, creeping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, know who you're dealing with. What are you, like, who did your favorite people, who are they talking to? Like, if you're, are you paying attention? Just like, yeah. are you, at the very least, are you paying attention to yeah, the world yeah, around yeah, you? Yeah. And like, who's showing where? This person usually always shows with this other person. And they always show with this type of a gallery. So it's so easy. It's learning. It's like getting, it's getting yourself acquainted with the world that you like. Yes. And it, it's your responsibility, A. Yeah. And it's, B, it's so stupid easy. I remember before Instagram, I had look up on Facebook, maybe like where people went to school or like talking points and be like, what can I talk to this? If I run into this person or like to make a point to say hello to someone, yeah. like social grace type of style, what am I going to talk to this person about? And now I've realized it's just like, you just say, Hey, I'm a big fan of you. I really like what you do. But even before that, I didn't have like someone's images right in front of me on Instagram. That was like one stop shop where I right. could just look at shit where I had to like go to a library or like maybe see it in a newspaper. And any yeah, type right. of thing. Art in America or, or art spend, forum. You kind of spend a little bit of money. You had to go like, buy, th- buy things. Buy things. Yeah. Magazines. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I had juxtaposed. That was like one of the only things that I could see. Basically, my art world was whatever was Barnes & Noble. So there was Art Forum. There was juxtaposed. There was Art News. There was Art in America. And there was... And that was kind of it. Yeah, and there was like, you know, like this kind of like how to art thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, all right. Yeah, I mean, totally. Yeah. Now there's like no excuse. There's no excuse for anything. So, like, how bad do you want it? How interested are you? Like, how curious are you? And I don't know. Like, at the very least, shouldn't that be kind of fun? Yeah. <laughs> or, like, what, isn't that, aren't you curious about some of those things? What has been your most awkward, hi, I'm really a big fan of your work moment? What artist was it? Me saying that to someone else? Mm-hmm. Oh, I've had, I have an insane Lisa Yuskevich story, but I'm not sure <laughs> how much time do we have. It's pretty good. No, no. <laughs> you started it. <laughs> no, I don't think I can it's do that. It's a podcast. People like just she think might of be listening. Think of yeah. Well, she never knows. She could. <laughs> well, it's one of those things. We're like- gonna use her as a keyword <laughs> search. Lisa Yuskevich, just listen to this. I've had things happen to me, like, but all really lovely things where, like, once I was, I was teaching at Art Institute of Chicago for, like, this summer for a month and I was at Target and someone came up to me in, like, the grocery store and was like, are you Rebecca Morgan? I'm like, yes. And, and I'm like, how did you know this was me? And he, he's like, you take selfies all the time. Are you stupid? <laughs> like, are you crazy? <laughs> of course I knew it was you. But that was, like, the most lovely moment. But, like, honestly, that's what you should do. I, right. But, like, not to be a creep, quote unquote, but to just say, like, I really admire you. Yeah. And, and like, that's basically, my least use gave story is basically, like, me saying, I really admire you. And it went really south and <laughs> really wild. Wait. I t- can't talk too much shit. But ultimately, like, you have nothing, long story short, you have nothing to lose, everything to gain. Yeah. By just, like, saying hello. I admire you. I like you. You want to say, like, thank you to your favorite people, don't you? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. To say, like, you changed my, Gary Larson, you changed my life. Yeah, exactly. Like, like yeah, totally yeah, yeah. changed. And I, I noticed from people that I know that are of a slightly famous stature, I don't know that many, but a couple artists I've been around who people said thank you to, mm-hmm. and they're gracious, like, that makes the, their fan really happy. I mean, it's just... It goes a long way just to be a little bit nice to people back. 
Well, just, I mean, the fact that... I mean, that was probably your best grocery shopping trip. Oh, hands down. Yeah, hands down. But, I mean, just the fact that even someone kind of acknowledges... Although he didn't didn't really give me... He just kind of said, we take selfies. Yeah. Well, then we took a selfie together. Oh, that's nice. I'm like, we have to do this. We have to... And then we posted it, and it became like, you know, then it becomes a thing, and it's good. Yeah. But, I don't know. I just think a lot about just, like, how I can trace actual moments in my career from just being just being like okay gotta pony up and like say hello Mm -hmm. and introduce myself and sometimes like amazing things happen out of it or like uh just i'm a huge fan and sometimes a visiting artist thing comes out of it sometimes um like infinite show things or Mm -hmm. sometimes nothing but then we're just friends or acquaintances but i mean it all counts and for someone to just say I see you and acknowledge the thing that you're doing is just like, oh my God, this is, I'm doing something. Maybe. And, then, and then if they're from Pennsylvania, you get even more. <laughs> I mean, that's like ultimate. No. When, I mean, like if you really want my attention, here's my like key. If you like drop some Pennsylvania shit, like some Steelers, some like black and yellow shit, I'll like lose my mind. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Cause I do that's... think a lot about like a hometown crew or like, right. uh, like I like this regional thing where we're all kind of pumped about one thing and like unanimously like you know interested in one or like a, a hometown love yeah for has, something. has anyone come up to him who didn't know you're from pennsylvania and be like this is your work reminds me of pennsylvania <laughs> i don't I'm know sorry. why i said that with a twang well, I don't know works from yeah. Pennsylvania. Yeah, is, is there ever been like a i was here two weeks ago with my family i was just so happy to be in the gallery just showing my family around mm-hmm. this is the first time that they had seen it and again one of those things it happens all the time, especially when I'm at a show with my work and they're like, are you, are you Rebecca Morgan? I'm like, yes, this is me. And so this like gaggle of guys, they were from, they went to the same state school system that I did. They went to the same college that my mom did. What's they, a gaggle, by the way? It's like more than one person, okay. like, like three, okay. a trio, yeah. <laughs> gaggle, okay, thank you. a contingency. Uh, and so like, and so they were like, immediately we're like, oh, we're from the same ilk. We're, we're kin, like in some way. And so like an immediate love and bonding for this place that's like kind of fucked up and mostly amazing, mm-hmm. but like problematic and great. But so we just like shot the shit about like, oh, you're from, from Pittsburgh, you're a printmaker, all this stuff. So, um, it just feels good. It's just like being home. So I can have that type of moment. We're talking about Pennsylvania in New York. Everything's fodder for everything else at the end of the day. But I think a lot about like everyone be on the same team or a genuine love for something that we can unanimously get behind even if it's something as like large and ubiquitous as sports or like a team mm-hmm. that no matter which side of the aisle we're like still like we're at least from the same spot we're dealing with the same bullshit you're you're my bullshit yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know, I appreciate the fact that, into it. that you have that team thing is really I like that I think that's a really good way of even though the art is a you like you're saying it's about you yeah and there's it's about your life and the, the things that you the titles that you come up with and the, and the work that you're trying to build around these, like, these concepts but it's like I like this idea of team because yeah. it feels um, you're not doing it just not quite alone Mm-hmm. Which is, I think, is an interesting way to go about it. Yeah, I mean, like as artists, we're all like I. Because there a, is so much alone time. Oh my god! I mean, my I'm kind of a lone wolf as it is. Painters are kind of like that way, Just sit in their studio, brood, like stereotypically. <laughs> but like. <laughs> Stare. Intently. Yeah. And there is like this romanticized idea of a studio practice in that way. And sometimes it's not that far from the truth. But No, the only part that's romantic is the part they put on Instagram for a second where there <laughs> seems like something really <laughs> profound is happening. Or like, and they're really just kind of like varnishing mm-hmm. or, or they're, yeah, yeah, they're just uh, kind of like pretending like they're drawing on something. Mm-hmm. I love those moments. I, it's very Instagrammable. To, I've done it. I'm so guilty where I'm like, I'm going to paint. I'm going to like video me painting. But sometimes people, you know, I think a lot about like if my favorite artist at the time, like if if John Kern had an Instagram when I was 19 and I could have seen his like... He doesn't have an Instagram, does he? No. Yeah, okay. He doesn't, he doesn't have one at all. Yeah. So, but like if I could see a behind the scenes of like, or, oh. or if someone was telling me, here's how I navigated the art world and here's the problems and I acknowledge and see all these problems and also to demystify... I, I like... I'm very passionate about kind of demystifying the Mm -hmm. art world. And like, that's kind of my favorite platform to take on Instagram as a tool to just be like, well, here's how I did it. Here's how my painting recently I've been doing this. Like, 
so here's the fi final painting and here's what it looked like at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like, yeah, yeah. And, and so it's just kind of like my problems are your problems too. But like, I, I'm trying to tell you how to work through it or like you have, there's no other way to work, th work it out other than the, like be in the lab. Mm -hmm. I don't know how we got on this tangent, but ultimately like to use, use images, your images as a team, a team and like, you know, that we're all in this together. And also this is all impossible. And so we're all running. The other thing that I think about too, everyone gets all worked up about like, well, this person's doing really well. This person's doing, you know, right. like, ah, oh, this person got, uh, you know, ugh, how dare they? They got uh, this huge, big, freaking hardcore show. And what about me? But like at the end of the day, there's no one else that's making my work. There are people making figurative work. We're like, I'm not making, you know, abstractions. Mm -hmm. So like, I can't compare myself to, or nobody should be comparing themselves to any other artists because we're innately running such different races and on same team, but different teams. And so like, just do your, just get to work. Just don't worry. Just do, just do something like at the end of the day, everything to gain. Maybe that's my dumbass mantra. Like everything, nothing to lose, everything to gain, but it's for the art world. I think about it a lot just because why not just go to an opening? Why not say hello to someone? Why not, why not make a painting and put it on the internet? Why not try to do, have a pop-up show? Why not try to you know, like, mm -hmm. Who cares? Yeah. It's too hard. You might as well just enjoy your, just have, just enjoy yourself. It's almost hard to enjoy yourself. I know. I'm like blathering on, but I mean, it's all no, no. normal shit. It's yeah, like yeah. Everyone's trying to figure out, but it's too hard to like worry about other people. Of course you're going to be worrying about other people and the art world's looking at your brain on yeah, a wall. Well, and I think now because the social media thing is like so prominent is that we're all kind of watching each other so much mm -hmm. that sometimes you forget to kind of do your own thing. Yeah. So you have to kind of be careful. Yeah. I'm like constantly exhausted too. Like it's, it's I almost want to get off <laughs> of, of Instagram completely, I, I, there's, but I don't really know how to do it. I don't think you can. Yeah. You don't, you don't have a choice. I yeah. don't think, I don't think in this, if in the art world, I don't think there, there's not an option not to, unfortunately. And maybe it'll be a little bit different and maybe like in a different way somehow, mm -hmm. maybe it'll change. But I think if anything, it's a much better place to have it than not just as a tool. It's, yeah. it's so indispensable just to like, to find people, to communicate, to see, like, that's how all curators look and find new artists. I mean, I there's just no way around it. Yeah. So it's like either, you know, if you can't beat them, join them. But uh, sometimes it feels like, well, it is just an insurmountable amount of work most of the time, but I pr much prefer it to be an extension of myself than no, than not. Here, this should be our, this will be our last question because we yeah, yeah, should probably leave the wedding starting. We should probably leave this <laughs> restaurant. They just like gave us the whole back room. Um, <laughs> They're staring. Yeah. What is the worst DM you've gotten on oh. Instagram? We don't. We in the last two weeks. Oh my god! Oh, two weeks. Well, that might like. Oh, I have to really think. The last month. As an artist. Where do we even start? Yeah. No, uh, I mean, I, I, I figure it's... It's a lot of... I get a lot of messages like, your paintings make me so, like, sexually excited. And, like... And, whoa. Yeah. It's a lot of, it's a lot mean, of shit like that. I say whoa as if I'm, like, some sort of naive, like... Oh, yeah. But, like... Don't be just, surprised. Okay. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I just don't, you know... Like, your way... paintings make me want to, like, wish, wish that I was next to that like I wish I was that male who was nursing who's being oh, nursed you know it's like a lot of things like that and sometimes oh, I, I also <laughs> I also like wear my heart on my sleeve where I like my personal where I like joke about dating and I show yeah. like my bumble profiles and I show my dms and all of this shit like because again it's all about my most genuine expression and so sometimes I think that like the dating and like people think that that's how like they can talk to me or but they a lot of I mean we could like straightforwardly just read the DMs but most of them are sweet but most of them are <laughs> a lot of them are really sweet but but yeah they're mostly just uh, I wish I I wish I was that male who was nursing that big breasted woman I wish that you were you know like I, I think that's me with the erection that you drew like oh wow I was really <laughs> thinking this is going to go in a really different way uh, no, no but it's, no that's good that's great this is people. what we're dealing with great humanity yeah and this is why i make the paintings i make you're looking so <laughs> he's, he's like his head's hung in chain <laughs> just like wow <laughs> I, what did you think it would just be more like um i was in terms of entertainment value for the podcast i was hoping it was what you were saying <laughs> but also i thought you would just kind of say um 
I don't know. I actually don't know where I was going. With yeah. It. Well, I mean, that's the underbelly of the internet where people just straight up need to tell you or, well, the, this, the faceless, you know, human on the, on the other end. It's, I'm not shocked by anything, but now I just, I'm like, Ooh, I hope I get one of these so I can like publicly humi- like screenshot you and yeah, humiliate you. And I mean, obviously just like content, yeah. you know, <laughs> hashtag content. So like, it's fine. Like I'll, I'll figure out what to do with you. Um, but that's <laughs> like, bring it on because I'm going to use you in some way. But at the end of the day, it still doesn't feel amazing for people, you know, no. but it's, but I'm trying to say for me, how I'm even speaking about it is so normalized, which is also shocking. I'm just like, but you know, sometimes when it's more public, like out on the actual street and someone's saying shit to me, then that hold lingers a little longer, but, uh, yeah. Then like passive aggressive Instagram speak. Yeah. Right. Where I'm just like, I, like I have a receipt for you. I'm looking at it and I'm just going to screenshot and like completely obliterate you. Yeah. And, and so then my power comes back in that way. Yeah. But then like at the end of the day, it's, I mean, it's impossible to navigate. 